What is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to another Vela Pokemon League battle versus Bazika. And uh, yeah, our eight week battle. And um, we're doing strongly here. We are five for two, so we already are in playoff. Uh, at this point, we're just playing to become number one in our bracket. Bazika himself has quite a tough season, actually. Only has one win, six losses. And I don't think his team represent that, nor him. He's a very strong player, but haven't necessarily had the right tools in some matchup and of course hacks involved always a pleasant time and i hope i can um keep him for losing you know I'll, I'll, i need a win so i'll do everything in my power that's it basica's full draft is garchomp shaman slowbro mega dianchi rotom heat regiseal galvanchula snowlag soror goldbag and frostlass and yeah, straight off the bat, I really was expecting uh, not all these Pokemon to make it. I was very sure that uh, Snorlax and Slowbro was going to make it. Mainly because bulkier Pokemon tend to uh, put me back and definitely forcing me to play more defensively. Uh, but this is a team that I think isn't necessarily sustainable to actually just receiving damage. This is a team that I can actually punish quite hard. If I, you know, do the right place, and that's, you know, always this aspect. So we see Galvantula, Golbat, uh, Garchomp, Regiseal, Shaman, and Mega Dainchi. This means, in theory, that the team that I'm bringing could do very well here. Uh, we have uh, Gilith, actually, with, um, I do believe, Smooth Rock here to be able to compensate for Stoutland, to be able to just punish my this team with the uh, spamming return or superpower, depending on the matchup. Um, uh, Fly MC Garchomp, very straightforward, able to outspeed a uh, Mega DNC after plus one Dragon Dance. Scoff Latios, able to outspeed a Scoffed Garchomp, uh, because a Fels Gar Scarf Garchomp is something bad. Um, well, let's be honest, it does really well against me, and uh, I need a way to parry that, and Latios was that option, or Latias, I mean. Uh, Tabakoku, my dedicated Defogger. Uh, since Galvanchula was such a good Pokemon towards my team, and of course Stick Web is also an aspect, I decided to bring a Koku with um, uh, Nature's Power, Thunderbolt, um, I do believe U-Turn, and Roost, or Defy. I, I switched around the theme, I think it was, no, it was Thunderbolt and Hidden Power Ice together with uh, uh, Roost and Nature's Power. And of course, my really, really ace in this matchup is, is Mega Scissor. Uh, it means basically that Mega um, Dainchi can do 12 towards me, and that's that's always a plus, actually. And uh, besides that, the set here is Sword Stance, um, together with Bug Bite, Bullet Punch, and Super Power, to make sure that any matchup I force to fend off, barring Galvantula, will not do too well towards me. Uh, a plus 4, Scissor could very well sweep this team. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Like I'm basically going to look for a situation where I can start setting up. And from there, I'm going to take that win. So, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to actually lead off with my guild, predicting the um, Galvanchula to be the lead just to go for Rock Blast, just to kind of uh, bring that down very early and then try to default with my type of Coco afterwards. So with that said, let's go into the match. So from the get-go, we do get the right prediction, which is Galvanchula is the Pokemon that he's going to lead off with. So straight off the bat, doing kind of fine here, actually, doing really well. And uh, he has a nerve, so if we have a Rindaberry, then I'm kind of stuck. Then again, um, I was kind of predicting him to be a Compound Ivarium, with of course getting Thunders out of the way. But it actually shows me that his specs with the Volt Switch, we don't have to predict at all, actually, for that, uh, for the, uh, for the Stick Web. So with that in mind, uh, Defog seems kind of redundant, and Shaman is very tough for me to be forced to be dealing with there. Uh, I don't switch into that Pokemon necessarily that well. And Gila can easily take damage, but not that well. So I'm gonna send in Voltier, which is my Latios, mainly here to take whatever stab damage is gonna come my way. But we see Lead Seed, we see the leftovers, we know it's a bulkier variant of the Shaman, and I'm not too scared of that variant. While Leech Life is annoying at best, I still am able to kind of you know, force a switch with this in mind, so I'm predicting him to switch out, going into Rain Bronze of my Tapu Koku to be able to get some fair damage here. Just basically because what I was kind of feeling that uh, Steelix was really still possible come in, and yeah, clearly it does. And um, Thunderbolt should do well over a free hit KO if it is a bulkier variant, but it is bulkier, but it's way more bulkier because it is an assault vest Regiseal, and all of a sudden this was kind of scary. 
Uh, I didn't think I could maneuver, maneuver around that Pokemon all that well. And I do U-turn here instead of actually going for um, another Thunderbolt because I don't want to lose Tabu Koko, at least not yet. Um, and I take this opportunity to actually set up with my Scissor. I felt this was a really strong opportunity of pulling that up. As a Gold Bat comes in and um, all I'm really going to do now is that I kind of want to check how much damage a Bullet Punch does. If it is 50% or not, if it is 50% then I'm well around to actually be forced to actually set up uh, even further if I'm you know, able to, that is. So my opponent here goes actually, with, oh first, the bullet punch does over 50%, that's awesome. My opponent has heat wave, I'm kind of predicting that, but it's not in range of taking me out. We're still in a really good spot and I can easily go for another sword stance. Um, and well, I I'm say that, but it, it, it does take me out. <laughs> <laughs> and I lose Scissor here, and all of a sudden, kind of, how do I win now? Like, that's that's not what I wanted, and here's even tougher. I was kind of feeling that he was going to try to preserve his uh, goal bats. I went for Hidden Polar Ice, predicting Guard Jump to be a very fair switch in, but no, he actually U turns. Uh, was even worse if he'd gone for Roost there, so I'm kind of was not expecting that as Guard Jump clearly now comes in. And I'm very aware of that this Pokemon is going to be scoffed. It makes no sense that he wouldn't be. So I'm going to bring in Volt Hall to go for Intimidate. Basically, uh, even if he goes to Stone Edge, um, it wouldn't do more than, at best, 50%. Uh, but he does miss that, and I definitely think that's unfortunate. As uh, I pull a double here, feeling that he was going to probably switch out. And going into Volt here, yet again, in my uh, Latias. Uh, just to be able to get some damage going on, but with gold in mind, I kind of felt that I can probably reset the stand and just get up rocks without him trying to, or even if he tries to preserve this gold bat. But he actually went for Super Fang, and well, clearly, if he does Roost next time, then yeah, he's going to be able to uh, survive this. But it seems he doesn't have that, or he wants to sack the gold bat. I don't necessarily care. I just want to get that glorious stealth rocks on the field. And uh, he's actually gonna bring now his Mega Dayenshi. And I didn't want to risk this because if he goes for Rock Polish, I basically lose. And I have Heavy Slam. So, in worst case scenario, if he, of course, go for the Mega Evolution and sets up, we are able to actually knock out this Mega Dayenshi. So, we're in a pretty good spot here. But we actually just decide to go for the Moonlast. And like I said, it is unfortunate, but it's not game ending by any chance. And I guess I need my stealth lane, lock myself into return. I, basically, what I can do now is make sure that I bring it in range where I can take it out. Um, had, like I said, it had it gone for rock polish here, uh, he wouldn't been able to knock me out no, nonetheless. So it was no, made no sense for me if I lock myself into Iron Head. Uh, he actually kind of tried to preserve this Dayenshi, which I felt was strange, since um, well, clearly Registeel could have been a more fair switch in afterwards, and Dayenshi was in range with taking out no matter what. Uh, but yeah, would you not knock out the Radius Seal, unfortunately, and he's going to be able to return with the Iron Head. But we are able to damage the Radius Seal in that range where Rainbrow can come in and basically get some damage going. Because Tapu Koko, all of a sudden, are really, really, really tough my opponent to be forced to deal with. And I'm actually just going to go for the save uh, Thunderbolt. I don't want to risk, um, <laughs> like, um, Garchomp coming in. I mean, if it happens, it happens. Um, However, the Garchomp comes in now, and yet again, I can easily just switch into my uh, Latios and uh, lock myself into Ice Beam and just try to wrap up the game. He does connect with Stone Edge, it does over 50%, however, but um, he's definitely feeling something that, you know, it's not it's a big risk for him to um, lock himself into a better move than Stone Edge as I just lock myself, like I said, to Ice Beam, and we knock out the Mega and she. Uh, he is actually going to think now that he is faster, goes to guard jump. Uh, I haven't necessarily revealed that I am locked myself, but well, he gets that nasty surprise that guard jump is going to be knocked out. And his two remaining Pokemon, Shaman and Galventula, uh, could potentially put me in a tough spot. However, uh, I know already that none of them are Scarf, so all I really need to do is get the damage with Galventula in such a range where Tabaku can later take him out. But we do score a freeze here, and quite frankly, that's pretty much GG. Uh, while I do believe I won the game already as Garcha Fall, basically, because uh, either way how he spliced it, I would still sack play Koku um, to get in range where my uh, Gyros was going to come in. As one Dragon Dance, it takes out anything on a team anyway, but with that freeze, it's kind of just... 
it was more of a salt in the wound if anything I think I was playing fairly right at that point but yeah it just it just looked bad so I wasn't necessarily a big fan of that so Basika for his words I'm sorry if that freeze I think it's kind of killed the game even though it, we already wore the wrap up but it really just wasn't the last nail in the coffin considering how the match I was looking at that point so yeah a few ending thoughts just basically want to kind of clear my head uh, first and foremost I definitely think Basika was playing this game smarter than me um, knocking out Scissor really, really made it easier for him to win, and I think losing Garchomp in the end there was um, inherently it was a big risk by doing that because I think uh, Garchomp was uh, still a good Pokemon at Scarfer to be able to knock me out, but I think he didn't think I was Scarf, and uh, it really, really bited him in the ass, and I was, ah, I just felt it was very tough. Um, I was pretty sure I was going to lose to that point, but once Garcha went down, I knew I had the wrap up in my side. was nothing really he could do to stop that. Uh, but also at the same time, I really just want to enforce that aspect that had, <laughs> for the love of God, had I not been knocked out by the heat wave, uh, I would have won there already. Um, because Galventrala can't take a plus four bullet punch, he can take a plus two, however, and everything else did seem die to whatever moves I went for. So I was really, really, really annoyed by with myself that I didn't go for a second sword stance uh, against a Golbat instead of attacking it. I just wanted to see if it was 50%, uh, because if it is a super bulkier variant of the Golbat, then I can't. Uh, and this was definitely more of a special defensive speedier variant. So I kind of kicked myself in the foot a little bit uh, and, and tripped a little bit with that in mind, but at the same time, um, hopefully one learns something from that, you know, I, I really don't like gamble too much when I play the way I do and sometimes that aspect of not gambling really can uh, come back to bite you because you are too passive and this is definitely one of those certain situations. And it opened up the game quite a lot and made the game itself more exciting due to that. I think Basika really holding his own very well here and I think uh, this game is worth showcasing even though he hasn't been feeling that he has played too well. Uh, all I really can say is that I didn't misplay in the end there, and besides that, I think he was doing all the right calls and almost won due to that. So, for what it's worth, Basika, great job and great game, buddy. Uh, for everyone watching, I think we're doing just so, and you know, see us next week when we're going against a ninth opponent before playoff. So, until then, take care. Bye.